invite everyone. Today we have some visitors who have come to preach about Jesus Christ or whatever. So be on your best behavior. <laughs> I'm ready to beat any one of you right now, even if in front of this women. Hey, isn't that your daughter? Hello everyone, we have come here today to encourage you and speak about Jesus Christ. Because even though things might be hard in your life, God loves you. I love you too. Come here you beautiful lady. That's my daughter you're talking to. Good. Then you have already introduced. Should I call you father-in-law? Stop this! This is the opposite of what we want. We want to show the love of God and how salvation is available for all who seek Him. And in the hard times, He is always with us. Listen to me. We are all sailing across the sea of life. Some of you are in a great storm right now. Listen closely. God did not promise smooth sailing, but he did promise that you are going to reach the other side. Some of you have lost your job, your freedom. Some of you are going through a marriage crisis and relationship crisis. Some of you have experienced business failures. Some of you are going through a time of family illness. Some of you have experienced unexpected tragedy that has stricken you like lightning striking you out of a clear blue sky. But what can we learn from this chaos? What can we do to survive the coming storm? What do you do when you feel like you are going under? When chaos reigns, when fear grabs you by the throat and tries to drown you, what do you do? Chaos doesn't mean that something is wrong with you. Chaos doesn't mean that God is angry with you or doesn't love you, or that God has rejected you. Chaos does not mean that if you were in the perfect will of God, you would not be in that storm. Let me tell you this very frankly. Chaos is a normal part of life and living. Struggle is the essence of growth and development. A big tree begins with a little seed that is planted in the soil and fights its way up only to face the wind. Rain, the blazing sun, and endless adversity year after year to become a beautiful, magnificent tree. Because it's only in the storm that our faith can grow. It's only when your faith is tested by fire that you really know how pure your faith is. It's only when you are tested that your character can develop. The storm develops your confidence, and as your confidence is, so is your capacity. That means that God sent to David a lion to fight and then a bear to fight before he sent the giant. God has you fighting the fight you're fighting now because it's a fight designed to develop your confidence. And when you win this one, the next one will be a little bigger and will have the confidence because of your past victory. And when you win that one, you will win the next one and the next one and the next one because God is transforming you into a champion. If God doesn't answer your prayer right away, it doesn't mean he's not going to answer. God's delays are not God's denial. He's waiting for your persistence to overcome resistance. God did not use anyone in the Bible until he put them through the university of adversity before he allowed them to be a leader in the kingdom of God. You will have your adversity. You will reach the other side. God is going to make a champion of grace. Listen to me. When you focus on the threat, you will experience fear. When you focus on Jesus, you will experience faith. When you struggle, when you go through adversity, the things you trust in today will fail you tomorrow. People will fail you. It's not the end of the world. In time, your heart will heal. The sun will shine again. You will sing again. You will love again. You may think there is no answer for me, 
God has a thousand and one answers you haven't thought of. Where do you go when the storms of life are greater than what you can endure? When the storms are great, when the wind and the waves are crushing your dreams, where do you go? You go to the one who the winds and waves obey. His name is Jesus. He is the rock. He is the savior. He is our hope. Why are you still reading that book? Were you really deceived by those ladies who came to share the gospel? There's no hope for people like us. Everything in this book is hope. It's truth. We deserve to be here for what we have done. Yet God still gives us a way to Him. He gives us hope. How could there be hope for people like us? Are you blind or can't you see where we are? Let me tell you how Jesus saved even the worst of sinners. He was without sin and was being celebrated as a king only days before but was being mocked and beaten by those who celebrated him. His back was bleeding after being whipped and tortured. He had a crown of thorns placed on his head with blood streaming down his face. As he was forced to carry his cross, people shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Some of his friends were nowhere to be seen. He was stripped, and his clothes were divided among the guards. He was crucified between two thieves, two sinners deserving of their punishment. Much like us, one rejected Jesus and still in those last hours did not want to hear Jesus. But the other had a hope, a hope that even in this terrible situation, God could save him. Omara, you have been released from prison. Come, get your stuff. What? Get your stuff. 